Hi, my name is Catlin Tucker, and I'm an English language art teacher at the high school level, and I also teach online college-level writing courses. And this is a really brief webinar um, to support you in increasing the quality and the quantity of replies in your online Collaborize Classroom portal. So the objectives in this brief webinar are really to support you in teaching students how to say something substantial, um, something I like to call intriguing exit strategies, which really invite and continue conversations in the online space, and then some just basic guidelines for replying to peers. So substantial postings. Why is it important for a student to say something substantial in the online space? Well, there's a whole bunch of reasons. Um, primarily, it's that's what's going to drive conversations forward. If students are contributing to the conversations, both in their responses to the questions, but also in their replies to one another, in a substantive way, it's going to push those conversations to a deeper level. It requires that students really think about the question or the topic at hand and really think about what their peers have said if they're going to reply thoughtfully. It reinforces their understanding of the topic, and it really keeps that quality of discussion high so that students are invested in the conversations, um, they want to return to them, which leads to long-term success in the online space. And it produces more meaningful personal interactions. So especially for a group of students who don't get together physically very often, it's great to try to support that kind of community building in the online space. So here are some strategies you can share with your students to help them to be more successful in contributing in this substantive or substantial way, um, either in a posting or that is in response to a question you've asked, but also into their replies to one another. So they can present a new question to refine or even redirect the conversation if they feel that uh, an avenue of the conversation has kind of been exhausted. They can ask a question to the group to redirect it, to broaden, to refine the scope of the conversation. They can share a personal experience. This is really great for, again, making the space a little bit more personal, community building. I encourage students to think outside the box, you know, play devil's advocate. If what something you were going to say has already been said, can you share an idea that might be kind of controversial and ask students what they think about it? Um, asking for clarification, asking questions in general is something I really support in the online space. Um, oftentimes students want clarification on a topic, they want to know more, um, and they are hesitant to question one another, so I really encourage them to do that. I encourage them to make connections between their personal life and what we're talking about, what other students have said, other subject areas they're studying, books they've read, movies they've seen. Um, if if they've, they're reading what other peers have contributed to the conversation, um, they can also summarize main points. But really the main idea is that they really comment thoughtfully so they're contributing something meaningful to these online discussions. Um, one way to ensure that students are replying the way you would like them to is by embedding instructions into your actual questions. So this is an example of a political cartoon where I'm asking students, you know, what is the message of this political cartoon? But then I also have this language here that tells them exactly what they need to do once they have basically articulated their answer. So it says, suggest an answer or vote for one you think is particularly strong. If you vote for another student's response, please reply to that student explaining why you like their response and build on the ideas presented. So this is for a voter suggest question. So not only do they have to share their idea, if they want to vote for somebody else's idea that they think is very strong, they have to post a thoughtful reply to that student explaining why they agree with this response and then building on the ideas presented. Another example of embedding your instructions within your questions, um, this is an example of a question taken from One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, um, where I ask, what does the film trip represent, or the fishing trip, excuse me, represent for the men? And then again, I have embedded a different set of instructions for them. It says, once you have posted your response, read the responses posted by your peers and reply thoughtfully to at least two other students. And then I even go on to tell them you can compliment strong points made, ask questions, build on ideas shared. Um, so this, again, is embedding these instructions. They know that not only are they answering my question, but I'm asking them also to reply thoughtfully to two other students, and I'm giving them some guidelines for how they might want to go ahead and do that. So what are exit strategies? Exit strategies are basically teaching students how to end their initial responses to your questions, the instructor's questions, by inviting 
further discussion from their peer group. Um, and this is kind of awkward for students at first, but then it becomes very natural and it really opens the door for really meaningful replies from peers. Because as students are responding to questions, they don't always know how to reply to each other. Um, there's not an opening for that to happen very easily, so it feels a little forced. Exit strategies can make it easier for students to do this. An example would be, at the end of a posting or at the end of a reply um, to ask for clarification or further explanation from your peer group. So you might say something like, I'm confused about, does anyone have any ideas or insights that might help me understand? Another example would be to invite your peers to draw a different conclusion or share another perspective. Um, and this really honors the different perspectives being shared in the class. So a student might end one of their postings or one of their replies by asking, did anyone else reach a different conclusion based on the reading? Um, you can end by encouraging your peers to make connections. So an example of this would be, I was able to relate this to blank. Did anyone else make an interesting connection to this topic? Again, just opening that door for other students to respond and reply. Um, posing a follow-up question to the group to expand the conversation or to shift it in a new direction. So for example, this topic was not presented in the question, but does anyone have an opinion about? Um, and that way they can kind of add their own um, interest into the conversation, direct it in a place that they want it to go. Um, they can ask if any of the points they made were unclear or were confusing, if other people need clarification on what they've said. So if you might end a posting or a reply to a peer and say, you know, I had a hard time articulating my ideas. Does anyone have a question about my posting or the ideas I communicated in my posting? You can present a controversial idea and ask students if they agree or disagree with the statement. Um, and it's really important to have defined um, a respectful, safe space in your online Collaborize Classroom site if you're going to encourage students to kind of delve into controversial topics. Um, but I think that's definitely um, a great way to get student buy-in and interest. So you could end with something like, it seems like a majority of the class agreed that blank. Does anyone disagree or want to play devil's advocate? Um, and then for even students, you know, who are adult learners, it's nice to just remember, you know, basics about replying to people. In the online space, we don't have the benefit of body language, so reminding them to make I statements, um, to use each other's names when they're replying to each other because that really personalizes the space, makes it more human. Um, avoid generic compliments like, great job, or I really agree with what you said. Okay, why was this great? What did you agree with, right? Get them to make it a little bit more concrete and refined, explain what they mean. Um, remind them to ask clear and concise questions so they don't cause confusion in the online space. And keep the critiques focused on the content, not the person who said what was said. Um, content, not the person. And if you have a different perspective, just explain and support that perspective. So really, I'm hopeful that what you'll see is the kind of transition that I saw in my own Collaborize classroom space. So in one of my very first questions that I launched with my high school students, it was actually an icebreaker. I was trying to get my students comfortable in the online space. You'll notice that once we get beyond the multiple choice options, um, that students responded to my question and their, their replies were fairly thoughtful, but you'll notice there isn't any indented replies or they're very few. Um, and so my students started out kind of answering my questions, but not engaging with one another. So there's no replies on this page. Then about six weeks into my school year, we had a yes or no debate online. Um, and we had started talking about how do you say something substantial and reply to each other in meaningful ways. And you'll notice as I scroll down that in addition to their answers to my question, you'll start seeing some of these small replies. They are not using each other's name yet, but they're starting to reply to one another. Um, and so there was this like small growth that was happening over time as they realized, okay, she wants us to reply to one another. Um, here you'll see some meaningful replies where they're actually addressing each other by name and starting to get comfortable doing that. Um, and then by the time we got into second semester in January, um, they were doing this so naturally and they were so invested in the conversation. This is a reply to my question that you'll see as I scroll down 
that they're addressing each other by name, that their replies to one another are substantial, that they're asking each other follow-up questions and using the exit strategies in their responses. So as you encourage students to respond in a meaningful way, they really do start to own the space and feel invested in it, build these relationships, um, and then they want to reply, and their replies reflect the kind of... Um, the kind of investment that you want to see them have in this online community. And you guys are more than welcome to contact me if any of you have any questions, you have any follow-up concerns, you want any of these resources, um, I can try to make them available through Anna for you, but this is my Twitter, I have a blog, you can email me directly, I'd happy to be any support that I can um, to you in this process.